what is one day missed versus creating a habit that enables you and you know creates a new life a new lifestyle for you like what how does that compare if you miss a couple of days it's okay like don't be super harsh on yourself and don't give up hello wonderful people and welcome to the first episode of meaningful conversations podcast in 2022 today we're going to be talking about new year's resolutions and as you can probably tell from the title i will tell you why they don't work and what to do instead i know it's disappointing because most of us want to see the new year the arrival of the new year as an opportunity to do something different, to live a different life, to introduce new habits into our lives, etc. And we mean well, we want to stick to them. We, we understand that they're good for us. However, unfortunately, they don't work. According to research, 80% of New Year's resolutions, at least in the US, fail by the start of February. There are so many reasons why that happens. I don't want to go into all of them, but basically we approach a lot of the times we approach resolutions as an all in or all out kind of thing. You know, like I'm going to start exercising every single day or I'm going to start meditating every single day. And we go in very excited and we start doing it in January and then we miss a day and we're like, our belief in ourselves starts waning and we're like, oh, okay, well, I'm still going to try. And then we miss another day and then we miss another day. The thing is, it's not a habit. A resolution is something that you're like, okay, I want to do this, but you haven't thought it through. And a lot of the times, that's one of the other reasons that I have found, you know, throughout my research, experts say that people's resolutions a lot of times aren't specific enough. And that's a problem. They haven't thought through how that new something, how that new habit is going to fit their current lifestyle. They haven't thought it through. They haven't created a system. They haven't, you know, it's too abstract sometimes, or it's too overwhelming or too big, too abstract. They don't understand how to approach it, right? So now that you understand why they don't work, we're going to be talking about what works instead. And you probably have already guessed Yes, we need to create a system. We need to be proactive about a specific habit that you want to create with this, whatever you want to start doing, starting meditating, starting exercising, starting, I don't know. I just think about wellness straight away because a lot of my goals are around that. And a lot of the habits that I have been developing recently have been around that, but it can be whatever you are trying to create. It could be, you know, public speaking, more public speaking or something like that. Regardless of what it is, it is important to create specific habits and approach it from a scientific standpoint, essentially. So whatever it is that you have, either you have created a resolution, a new year's resolution for yourself. The reason why this episode is airing after the 1st of January is because I really believe that there's no right or wrong time. You don't have to wait for an arbitrary unit of measure to start this new habit. You want to implement this, right? So you can implement it right now. It doesn't have to be the 1st of January. It's kind of like a tricky little bit, but whatever it is, we're going to think through the habit aspects of what habit you want to create. We're going to th think through all of those aspects. Take your resolution and write down what habit you want to create. Think of the resolution you have set for yourself and different people will have a different amount of details already built in into that resolution and into that plan, but we're going to go much more granular. So think about it. Let's say you want to start meditating. You want to meditate regularly. Let's go more granular. Let's think of an attainable amount of minutes that you want to meditate per day. Start with five and, you know, adjust it for your resolution. So let's say you want to meditate for five minutes a day. Let's specify if you are taking any breaks. For me, no, I want to meditate on Monday the same way I meditate on Sunday or Saturday. Weekend, weekday, I want to meditate. I want to take care of my well-being. Hypothetical. 
do the same thing for you. It might be practicing violin for 20 minutes every Thursday, just Thursdays, because you know you'll have that window or whatever. And the next thing we're going to outline is when, throughout your day, essentially, when is this going to happen? A very interesting technique I have discovered as I was learning more about habits and habit hacking, which I will record a separate episode on habit hacking in particular, because I think that's such an interesting topic. And also it just gives you so much power over yourself, your habits and all that stuff. So another episode is coming soon on the topic, but one of the key principles of habit hacking is finding a trigger. A trigger is something that you do on a regular basis with the same regularity that you want your habit, your new habit to take place. This trigger is automatic at this point. It's such a huge habit of yours that you do it at that regularity without even thinking. So we will attach this new habit to that trigger so that you start slowly but surely, you start associate that new habit with the trigger and then it becomes more and more automatic so for example brushing your teeth or drinking coffee you know like the first cup of coffee in the morning everybody has their own rituals right doing those things or maybe when you go for your lunch break you have a tradition or a habit of doing x think of the triggers that you can be attaching this new habit to so for example with me meditation first thing in the morning once i'm done with my journaling. And I do my journaling every single morning after I wake up and I brush my teeth. I go downstairs and I journal. So I want to meditate right after I journal. Great. We have a very specific five minute task that is attached to a very specific trigger that happens at the same regularity. Now we have a plan. The next thing we want to do is eliminate any barriers that may exist to starting that action. So for example, in you know the, the meditation space, it could be finding a meditation, a guided meditation that I like so that I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about it or you know, when I'm there, I'm just searching for things. I know what I'm doing. If you're starting to exercise, for example, that may mean putting your workout shoes right next to your bed so that when you get out of the morning, there they are. You just slide right into them and you go work out. Eliminating those barriers and making that action as easy for you to do as possible. With a violin example, you can put your violin in your room so it's not hidden. It's like it's part of your room. You can create a stand or find a stand or whatever. It's there. It's super easy to do. You don't have to. There are no barriers for you to start the action that might delay you or potentially deter you from taking the action. And the final thing that we're going to do is we're going to create accountability for you. And that can come in different shapes and forms. In fact, I would recommend combining the different shapes and forms. One of them is actually having a tracker. And there are a bunch of habit trackers that you can just find online, or you can use your Google Calendar. You can create one for yourself. Essentially, what it is, is taking off those days so that you can see when you have missed a day. And that is an extra bit of motivation because you want to continue taking off. You know, that's when we tap in into that perfectionist mindset and that perfectionist will actually help us instead of, you know, making things harder for us. The other way to stay accountable is to find an accountability buddy. For example, someone who does the same habit with you, starts the same habit with you, and you know, you can check in with each other. Or you can ask a friend who is not starting that habit, but just someone who cares about you. It can be a loved one, it can be a family member, whoever is going to keep you accountable and keep asking you about this thing and who wishes you well, who really wants you to succeed and also expects well, achievements from you, you know, like they're not going to give you slack um, because that kind of person is going to motivate you. Even the fact that you need to tell them about the fact that you didn't do something will motivate you. Now that we have all of those things in place, you are ready to create a new habit and it will take time. A lot of people talk about habits taking from 21 to 28 days. You know, psychologists kind of differ on 
on that. And I want, I want to stay conservative. And I say that do it for a month and then it starts becoming more automatic. I talk about this all the time. I have habit hacked myself. I have created a new habit for myself using the same structure, using the same mechanism, and it has done wonders for my well-being. It's this works essentially, if you do it right, but you're the only one who can do it for you. Just like with resolutions, right? You're the only one who can create this. But now that you have an actual system that is enabling you and empowering you, I don't want to say empowering you because you've always had the power, but it is enabling you. It is giving you the tools to create this habit for yourself. You have no excuses. Go get it. (laughs) Go create those habits. Go make your resolutions come true or whatever you wished for this year, make it come true because you are in control. You can do it. Create those habits and, you know, try to focus on one at a time. But hey, we're not looking for the 1st of January 2023 to implement the next habit. You can start implementing the next habit once you're, you know, you feel much more confident about this habit and once it's automatic. A couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, It will be hard. At some point, once the first excitement of, you know, starting this new habit and being proud of yourself, once that wears off, it is going to be hard. Our brains don't like change and they will resist this new change. So just prepare for the fact that you will have to push yourself some days and it just won't come natural. It's just a reality. The second thing is if you miss a day, or if you miss miss two days, don't give up. You're doing this for you. You're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for your friend. You're not doing it for anyone else, but you're doing it for you. And what is one day missed versus creating a habit that enables you and, you know, creates a new life, a new lifestyle for you? Like, what, how does that compare? If you miss a couple of days, it's okay. Like, don't be super harsh on yourself and don't give up. You can do this. I hope this was helpful. I hope that all of the things you want to implement this year, all of the habits that you want to start, that you manage to start them. I will create a separate episode on habit hacking in particular because I think that's such a fascinating topic. Again, like it, it makes you feel like you're so in control of your life because you are in control and it's all patterns and we just need to have the tools to create new ones. Let us know what you thought about this episode by commenting below on YouTube or sharing this episode on social media and tagging us. You can do so at Stereotype Breakers on most platforms. On Twitter, it's at Stereotype Breakers. The vowels didn't fit in. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're on YouTube and if you're in podcast land, subscribe to this podcast in the platform of your choice. We can also be friends on other social media. You can find us as Stereotype Breakers or Stereotype Brokers on Twitter. Have a wonderful time of the day. You're currently experiencing an incredible start to 2022. Bye.